So this is ATP. So ATP in its center has the sugar ribose. When we get to the genetics and nucleic acid section, we'll talk a little bit more about ribose and, and its uh, sort of equivalent, deoxyribose. Ribose at one end has this thing called a nitrogenous base attached to it. And in ATP, that nitrogenous base is called adenine. And at the other end are these things called phosphate groups. And ATP is called ATP because there are three phosphate groups. And in fact, ATP stands for adenosine, which basically describes all of that part of the molecule, triphosphate because there's one, two, three phosphates. And when ATP, when the energy is utilized in ATP, typically it's just that phosphate that's hydrolyzed off. And when that happens, it produces ADP, or adenosine diphosphate. So di because there's only two. So when you're going back and forth between ATP and ADP, what's happening is simply a phosphate is being put on, and a phosphate is being taken off. A phosphate is being put on, a phosphate is being taken off. Uh, anabolism takes a phosphate off, catabolism puts a phosphate on. And so that's what we're seeing right here. So this is ADP on the bottom again, and this is ATP on the top. The only difference is that ADP lacks that phosphate that ATP has. Organisms take in what are known as energy sources. For us, that's food. For plants, that's light. And they use those energy sources to take ATP, ADP rather, and phosphorylate it to make ATP. And then organisms utilize that ATP to do everything that's involved in being alive. And so you have this energy coupling between taking in energy sources and doing whatever it is the organism does with those energy sources. And the couple, more or less, is, involves uh, taking ADP, converting it to ATP, and, and back again. So then the question is, how do cells take ADP and produce ATP?